This case, uh, I, I can imagine that uh, it's the CHP involved plus uh, agencies from out east probably getting a hold of Long Beach PD, the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, to bring in their, uh, their armored trucks to try to catch up to this or find a place where they can intercept it uh, because that's really the only way that they can intervene physically to stop this person from going any further. You know, Eric, and law enforcement agencies have uh, been criticized and scrutinized by how they handle police pursuits like this. Uh, obviously, they'd like to get this person, slow them down, take them into custody. However, they pose a public danger as well. So you know, what are agencies supposed to do? Well, we've seen the, the, there's sort of two directions that have happened here. On the one hand, uh, virtually every big police agency has restricted again and again the criteria for when they're allowed to start chasing someone in the first place. This case clearly is off the charts the other direction. There's no mm -hmm. question that they need to do something to stop somebody who's desperate and speeding through the public, possibly armed with a pretty powerful weapon. Um, so these cases are the exception. Um, the, the, a lot of the criticism we've talked about lately has been why did a chase get initiated in the first place. In this case, there's not really a question here. We've got an armed carjacking, an exchange of gunfire, and someone speeding through uh, public streets causing uh, an enormous amount of danger for everyone else. Now, how they resolve it, uh, again, they're, they're going to try to have to use some kind of physical object to stop this person from going any further, which is probably going to be one of their armored, uh, armored trucks if they can find a way to get it to catch up to the chase. Yeah, and that, of course, is the big question, whether that can happen at this point. We want to remind our viewers, we started the NBC4 News at 4 early to bring you this breaking news, and it is now coming up on the top of the hour here. We also have our law enforcement expert, Dr. Errol Southers, with us. Uh, Errol, are you with us? Are you able to join us and weigh in on this dangerous pursuit? I am with, I am with you, I believe. Great. We hear you just fine. Uh, you know, give us your perspective on this. What a challenge for law enforcement right now. And as Eric mentioned, just the safety of everyone involved is, is just, it's frightening. Well, Eric actually captured it very, very accurately. You've got a very serious crime that's already happened. Um, the amount of resistance in terms of them trying to escape is pretty apparent. But he does pose an immediate threat to officers and a danger to the community. And as we emphasize a reverence for life here, we have to think about the potential for injury to, you know, citizens and, and officers that are in this chase. So all of those things are taken into consideration with regards to whether or not we can, we can stop him later on. Um, I, I mean, it's always hopeful that he'll go down a street that's going to end, but he seems to be on some pretty interesting thoroughfares traveling at a very excessive speed. And uh, perhaps he knows where he's going, which makes it even more challenging. But this is very, very tough because this is not someone um, that you uh, necessarily want to see get away because he is a threat until he is actually stopped. So, Errol, what do law enforcement agencies do here right now? I know it's a sort of a mutual aid and, you know, everyone in these surrounding cities and counties, they're being notified and they're working with each other. But this is essentially a, a game of cat and mouse here. I mean, you, you can't lay a spike strip down because you don't know where he's going to go next. So, you know, let's talk about some of the other challenges. Well, you're absolutely correct. It's cat and mouse. The best thing we can do now is keep him in uh, visible with an airship that's up there. Uh, mutual aid is in. So I would imagine people are looking at the grid to decide, okay, if he's at a certain speed traveling on a certain road, how far can he go and how far can we get ahead of him to, in fact, intercept him in a place that's safe for everyone to slow him down and then to stop him? Uh, but you're right. It's cat and mouse. And, and the only thing we can count on is if he stays on the same roadway, that does give law enforcement a bit of an advantage in terms of tactically planning for where they might intercept him. Yeah, this is just so challenging because we keep watching him blow through uh, lights, red lights, driving consistently on the wrong side of the road. Uh, earlier, Josh Cuso witnessed him come right up to some school children crossing the street. So, Dr. Southers, as you mentioned, you know, there is a threat to, to safety and to life of people in these different communities this driver's passing through. Right. And, and the threat continues as long as he keeps driving. So, you know, can they divert him off this main road to a place where they can actually stop him? That's probably a very, very good tactic. Wow. If you can anticipate in terms of distance where he may be in the next couple of minutes and have him turn left or right and then stop him in a place where you can control it. But you've got to be able to, to contain him and then you can stop him.
That seems to be the biggest challenge here right now is containing this driver. Uh, Dr. Errol Southers, we appreciate it. It's our NBC4 law enforcement expert. We want to kick it back up to Josh Cuso live at News Channel 4. And, and Josh, as I'm looking at the uh, speedometer here on our screen, 74 to 75 miles per hour here on city streets. Yeah, that's right. You're seeing this just as I am. I mean, this thing is flying. I think we're on the PCH, if I'm not mistaken. We just crossed over Frigate Ave, and this thing was doing... 80, 85. I mean, this thing is really picking up speed when it gets uh, onto these uh, long straightaways that they can get. But you see there on the right side, the police cruiser just right there is trying to maintain contact with it. Even as we approach these red lights and this truck almost has to play Frogger to get across and they're waiting and then some people see what's going on and just stop. So thankfully we're not. We haven't seen too much uh, crossing a red at super high speeds just yet, but as this thing goes underneath the 110, where we would expect to see it pop out on the other side in a second, and there it is. So underneath the 110, on the PCH, and I believe we are headed westbound on the PCH, so we will be headed towards the shore very shortly, but... Josh, you know, what, what's interesting is he's really slowed down right now, and, and at times, Michael and I noticed that he actually stopped in the middle right. of the road and then picked up speed again. Is there any, can you, can you discern any sort of pattern here or what might be going on? No, I can't, but I can say when I zoomed in, one of the times they stopped, I don't want to speculate, but I would, I see something on the windshield that looks awfully a lot like bullet holes, if I'm not mistaken. I noticed but that too. Yeah. I did yeah. catch that detail when that uh, driver stopped, but I have seen them slow down quite a bit. It seems like maybe they try to think about their plan before they charge into a heavy area of traffic like this. We see them sort of stop and maybe take a second to try and figure out their next moves, but uh, then they just pick up speed right again once they get some, uh, once they get some distance or it once does, they get some uh, space. It does look like that driver's window is down. It is down well. now, right. Yeah. yeah, so this time it is down. I'll punch in here and give us a look, and you can see that driver, I mean, almost like they have a hand on their chin or something as mm -hmm. if they're trying to think about, uh, I guess, think about what they're trying to do here, but maybe that's why they started slowing down. Maybe they're getting, maybe they're starting to think about this a little more, but it's really hard to tell. I mean, we, we can see, you guys can see just as much as I can. We can see the driver. We can see, again, now that we're in front of it a little bit, I'll zoom in again, but that really, really looks like some sort of damage to the hood. I mean, maybe not bullet holes, but it really looks an awful lot like them. Now we're into a shopping center right off the PCH here. Uh, zoom out here and try and see where this ends up, but maybe we just are cutting through this shopping center as sort of a shortcut, but we're almost stopping. They have a lot of a lot of area to go so we can see that driver has a backwards cap on they're sort of leaning out looking left and right i mean maybe they're now going pretty slow i would have thought they would have just sped up there but doing pretty normal speeds here on the on normandy we just got onto normandy ave so let's see what this driver does as we're almost coming to a stop yeah. and this is exactly what we saw not too yes. long ago carolyn yes, i noticed and you again see yeah, and you see the police doors open up right there, trying to get ready to uh, try and extricate this person, get them out. Hopefully this person complies, but really keeping an eye, uh, not picking up crazy speeds here, but we are coming up to what mm. might be a red light. It's really hard to tell because I think once people see what's going on, they just sort of stop and hope to get out of the way. Uh, yeah, but now we got off Normandy. We are on two, 253rd. We're on Normandy and 253rd heading east on 253rd now just sort of driving through the, the side streets i think some people you see some people standing out there i don't know if they were expecting it to come here or not because sometimes when we see these pursuits end up on these side streets you see especially when they start doing circles everybody hears the commotion i mean there's numerous helicopters and it's your window shake it's a whole thing if it's come over your house but when it does circles in these neighborhoods sometimes we see people start to come out and gather that car wants nothing to do with this and backs up tries to get out of the way oh when that car this truck oh. almost hits that red car. Let's see. We can see the driver. They look back. They're trying to. It's almost like they're looking for something. It's really well, hard to tell. You know, and, and you mentioned there were at here. least two carjackings yeah. from that getting onto one of the side streets. It's hard to keep up when we're on so many of these tiny little side streets. But here's a look at the windshield as if that we were talking about. It's so, it's tough because it's a small mark, so it's really hard to get a better look at that. But now we just took a left. We've officially done a circle here. We're back onto 252nd, kind of just cruising down this, almost like 15, 20 miles an hour, passing that person in the orange again. 
that yeah, and, person, I you mean, know, you Josh, would have had to hear all the cop sirens go by. So who Josh, knows? Maybe, maybe this person is here in this neighborhood for a reason. Maybe they're doing 15 for a reason. It's really hard to tell what the motivation could be because we saw them doing 85 on some of the majors, and we know that this thing was started in Corona. So we've really covered some ground now because we started in Corona. Now we're here, 254th and Marigold, just about uh, in, in Los Angeles. We took the PCH for a while, so really covering some ground here. And sometimes these things end up in areas that it seems like the per the driver might be familiar with. So we'll keep an eye on that and see if, if we see anyone approach the car. But now we're starting to pick up speed. If I'm not mistaken, we're doing like 65 on that side street. Some people just walking by. Some people just just trying to just get on with their day. This thing just whizzes right by them. But we, look, we have come to a full stop. You saw the truck jolt there, but it's going to pick back up Short again. Short-lived, yeah. They really slammed on the brakes there for a second. And Josh, well, guess, any sign they saw of, that cop oh, car, there we the go. cop car just moving out of the way there. Maybe they couldn't have recognized the truck that quickly. Who knows, because the airship's always calling out where this thing is. And now we're right through that Oof. stop sign. Coming up to another one, that cop car right there trying to intercept it, but this truck's going to go the opposite way. You saw the airship at the top of your screen there. Everybody's trying to keep an eye on this thing, and as we start to weave through these side streets, it's really hard to, like uh, like our expert was saying, it's really hard to get an idea, try and put a net, uh, so to speak, around this pursuit to try and put some units in front of this thing to bring it to a stop. But it's just weaving in and out of these neighborhoods. Oh. I was going to say blowing through stop signs, but that just looked like a rolling stop, really. But now you see the ground unit really trying to close the distance there and get up on this car as we blow through another stop. Might come to a stop again. It's really hard to tell what this, again, what this driver's motivations are. We're now on President Ave, crossing over the PCH. Let's see, maybe we get on the PCH again. Hard to tell. Just, oh, and it jams on the brakes again. And now we're going again, maybe sort of playing games here or something. Now we're going to take a right. We got, we crossed over the PCH. Now we're on President Ave, almost down an alley, if That's I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm going like to have to zoom out here. and see, but. Yeah, and Josh, just to remind our, just want to remind, here. we just want to remind our viewers the, the danger of this situation because this driver is uh, armed we, with a. I'm trying, I heard something on the radio that I would really like to see before I report that, but. This is, I mean, this has been, this might be becoming uh, increasingly dangerous as we start to, as this person starts to get a little more desperate as we do these circles and they slow down and maybe realize that there's not, not many places that they can go to get away from this. Oh, Josh, right if, you're gonna, if you light, can hear me, I'm going to ask our directors to there. bring Josh's mic down for just a minute because we want to remind our viewers just how dangerous this is. This driver appears to be armed with some sort of long gun, maybe an assault rifle, just maybe a rifle, but we did see this driver firing on the freeway back at officers, and you could see the bullet holes in that windshield when uh, Josh Cuzo was able to push in a little bit more closely on the vehicle we do now see oh oh all right let's uh let's uh bring josh back in this has we now heard that they were shooting out the window so we have to see how this ends the suspect's going to try and run now and there's another cruiser one stopped with him another one's driving up to try and get him he's running across the street it doesn't seem to have anything he's trying oh, no. to carjack oh, no. another car oh, no. but that seemed to be locked now a number of chp officers descending on this person we see Guns might be drawn, this person running, and got that they've got him down. They are tackled. They, they really got them. I think yes, they multiple might officers. have been able to get their hands now. So really hard to tell what's going on under the mass of bodies there, but it seems like the police forces have apprehended this suspect here after that after they came to a crash here right on Western and then tried to carjack another truck. Yeah. You saw it here, but it looks like it will come to a peaceful end. It's really hard to tell, but thankfully it looks like they have apprehended this person, hopefully gotten any firearms out, because we right before this heard that they were still shooting out of the window. Right. So it looks like it looks like this has come to an end here in it, in in this area. But it, wow, is Eric what, Leonard I mean, you guys still with us, us in the newsroom? Uh, can we bring Eric back in? You know, this has just been an incredible end to this and, and so very dangerous as we knew that this driver was armed when he we saw him crash into the 
light pole here and run out. He did not have a long gun on him, but you don't know if he might have had another weapon on his body, Michael. Yeah, that is the unknown at this point, but we did witness him actually approaching another vehicle. Lucky that vehicle appeared to be locked yep. at that point, and, and I was waiting for him to try, you know, two or three more, but this is when officers were able to tackle and get that suspect into custody. Eric, are you with us? I am. Let, let, let's talk about the, the, the procedures, everything that rolled out from the moment he hit that police cruiser and that, and that pole. Well, as you guys were hearing and talking with uh, Errol Southers earlier, the, the person they were chasing was dictating all of this. I mean, there was the driving was at such extreme speeds, and it seemed to be without any kind of uh, consistent direction or pattern that all the police could do was react, and they were waiting for the moment to intervene. You could certainly see that there were changing dynamics during this based on uh, this person's driving. At some points, they backed off, hoping that maybe he would slow down. Other points, they closed the the distance and got very, very close. And I think that's what we could see really in maybe the last five or 10 minutes of this was that uh, the patrol cars that were trailing suddenly started to creep in and get much, much, much closer. And if it weren't for that uh, traffic accident where he sideswiped that patrol car and then lost control of the truck and hit a pole, uh, who knows how much longer this would have gone on. But uh, I can tell you that uh, in just in exchanging messages with some uh, law enforcement folks, their planning, and it never got that far, was to try to intervene with some kind of heavy vehicle like an armored truck. All right, Eric, we appreciate your expertise. We want to uh, kick it on over to uh, Dr. Errol Southers. Uh, Dr. Southers, are you with us? I certainly am. Let's get your analysis on what has happened here with the suspect. Well, as expected, uh, he came to a stop as a result of a traffic accident, which was very fortunate. But again, I, I, words cannot express and commend the officers for the way that they managed this. As was mentioned previously, the driver was dictating this pursuit, and absent a, an opportunity to actually deter him to, to go down the street or to have him go a different direction, um, this was the only way it could end. You know, the great fear you've got that someone's going to be injured who's driving along the road or walking along the road, knowing he is armed so you can't exactly get too de terribly close to him, and the officers were aware of that because he may shoot out of the vehicle. So just the restraint and the patience that they exercised to take him into custody, and God only knows... Uh, how lucky everyone is that there were no innocent people driving or walking that were injured as a result of this very lengthy pursuit at a very high rate of speed in the middle of the day. And Dr. So, Southers, we, we see a number of people here gathered with uh, law enforcement right. at that corner. It's almost as though perhaps they witnessed what had happened and, and weren't aware of the preceding pursuit. It almost looked like these folks were challenging the officers to some degree. Well, well, let's hope not. Um, you know, people coming on the scene not knowing what's happened here, why the officers were chasing him. I, I think you're looking at an incredible amount of patience and professionalism right. to bring this to an end. And then you can see that they took him into custody without further incident. It appears that no officers were injured and no citizens were injured. So this really resulted in the end the best way it possibly could have. Well, wow. we, uh, we did see him crash into one of those cruisers of just cruisers. before he right. lost control and crashed into that light pole. And hopefully that was a, an accident that did not enter, injure that police officer. Yes, you know, we'll, we'll have to see. Um, this is a very, very long pursuit. Um, we'll have to see who got hit along the way, if there were any other citizens whose vehicles were damaged. But most importantly, it's all about preservation of life at the end. And mm. it appears that no one was seriously injured. And that's the best outcome we could hope for in a case like this. I guess this is, a, this is one case where you want an accident like this to happen because it stops the, the pursuit of danger within this neighborhood. And again, this stretches all the way from Corona to where we are right now. So, Dr. Earl Southers, we appreciate your time here this afternoon. And again, I, I'm looking as we look at our news chat before shot here. Are they putting someone else in cuffs at this point? It appears that way. Let's bring and, up, and Dr. Southers, yeah, it, as you it, it, mentioned this, you know, this is the end of a pursuit and some of these uh, people have responded here and, and appear to be challenging officers. So it looks like they are, you know, taking this, this one man into custody. Yeah, it appears that those people aren't understanding that that's a crime scene and mm -hmm. perhaps they want to pass through it. And the officers are probably denying them access to the area. Maybe they need to walk home. Maybe their vehicle is over there. But for the moment, with all due respect to this being an inconvenience, this is an active crime scene. Right. And those officers have to contain it. 
And unfortunately, those people don't seem to understand that. That seems to be the basis of the argument at this point. And, and it's very unfortunate that someone have, would have to be taken into custody for not obeying a lawful order from an officer at an active crime scene. Yeah, well, their body language appears to be a little more passionate than just having to take an alternate route to get out of that intersection. So it, I think there's more to come on this, Dr. Southers, for sure. Yeah, it looks like uh, someone's going to be going into custody, and, and, and that's unfortunate, especially if he had nothing to do uh, with the pursuit. Right. We do appreciate your insight and staying with us throughout what was a wild pursuit Ooh. and I'm grateful that this one ended peacefully, that the driver did not exit the vehicle with the weapon that we saw. But here we have it uh, queued up for you again. There's mm. where he crashed into the cruiser and then smashed into that light pole. You saw the door fly open and that man then ran. But you saw those officers respond running quite quickly after him. And Michael, coming up here to where he appeared to try to carjack another vehicle. Yeah, that's right. You see them at that truck right there. Imagine what's going through that driver's mind at that point. But it gets in front of it and runs underneath those trees there. And you see that uh, the flurry of officers there just pounce on that suspect at that point. Yeah, and, and so many did uh, bring him safely into custody. And we did see him being walked to a vehicle and, and taken into custody with no further injury to officers or to the driver involved. All right, uh, we want to kick it back up to Josh Cuso here really quickly as we uh, wrap up our coverage here of this pursuit. Uh, Josh, uh, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, you guys saw it like I did. This thing, a lot of dangerous moments in this pursuit that had started in Corona and ended here at Western and 253rd. Thankfully, it came to what appeared to be a peaceful end, even though at multiple times we heard reports on the scanner that this suspect was shooting out the window uh, towards those cop cars, but we saw it just couldn't squeeze by that uh, other...